YouTube Gecko 101 care sheets with leopard geckos. All right, um, let's go over the natural history. They come from India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Um, they're very gentle. They are nocturnal, um, th which means they come out during the day. They come out during the night and sleep during the day. All right, um, they get about uh, around I'd say nine to twelve inches, but some being smaller. Um, 12 inches is only for like the giant bloodline so um if you're into gecko morphs and stuff if you have a um like a giant max snow they could get up to 12 inches all right males are bigger in terms of length and girth um when they're when they're uh babies they're about two inches when they hatch all right on um, they re they reach maturity in I don't know, let's say two, 18 months to two years, all right? Um, they live up to 15 to 20 years. All right, um, housing. They could be kept in 10 gallon through, throughout their life. If you wanna go bare, you go 15 gallon and up, but I would not recommend anything bigger than 30 gallon for one. But if you have like three, you could fit them in a 40. All right, um, they're terrestrial, they don't climb. They just need, um, they stay on the floor. All right, now heating and lighting. Um, they come from dry desert, so um, they need low humidity, about five, about 10 to 30% humidity, I think would be good. 30% if they're shedding. All right, um, ambient temperatures, you want around 80, I'd say about nine, yeah, 90, in the, no, 85 on the hot side, 80 on the cool side during the day. Now ambient air means um like not the floor where it's hot, but like the air temperature. So you would measure temperatures like up to only this high, cause that's how high they are. All right. But for best temperatures, you want about 90 degrees. Ignore the barking. All right. So um 90 degrees for basking temperatures and the mid 70s at night. What the basking temperature still at 90 degrees. All right, so um, you don't need UVB. They're nocturnal. You give them calcium and supplements. Um, one thing you could give them is Repcal, calcium with vitamin D3. And that, you get this about once a month on their crickets or on their mealworms would be good. You could also give them calcium without D3. Sorry, I lost the top, so... um. Here it is, Repcal Calcium without D3. Give that about three out of four feedings. All right, now um, that's for temperatures and stuff and lighting, all right, and supplements. Now, oh yeah, for supplements, you could also, if you want, you could dust the crickets or you could leave a calcium dish in there and once a month just fill that with vitamin D3 calcium. They lick it up as they need it. Um, substrate, I recommend paper towels, newspaper, or carpet, like, um, what do they call that, a uh, repti carpet or something like that, and, um, that's really it, don't recommend sand at all, it's really not worth it, it might look nice, but I think, actually, paper towels look the nicest, um, what else, let's see, let's see, let's see, um, now for like cage wise, like in like in the cages, you have a hide on the cool on the warm side where like you have the heat source, and yeah, and you want to have a cool side hide where it's not where the heat source isn't. You want to have a humid hide. I use a 16 ounce deli cup with a lid, and I fill that up with sphagnum moss. Hold on one sec. Sphagnum moss is this. This is dry sphagnum moss. All right, um, yeah, and you moist that about, uh, you mist that with a mister, like these get 99 cents. See, all right, and you want to use dechlorinated water. You could, eat, you could just take tap water and let it sit with no top on the bottle for about three days and it'll dechlorinate itself. You have a water dish. I use Lee's mealworm dish as a water dish. 
because it's the perfect size or you could use uh, one of these, it's a Zoomed small corner dish. They're perfect for geckos, but I think it's a little too deep. But it's up to you. It's like two inches, three inches. Alright, um, I think that's perfect. They like it. Especially if you don't feed mealworms like me. Um, I also have a little tube in there to play on. That's it. Basic setup. Looks nice. I have some little plants in there. If you want, you could add, like, a little, instead of a hip tower roll, you could add this. It's called a five-gallon jungle gym. All right, you get it on lloreptile.com. They play on it and stuff. And if you have an overhead heat source, like a uh, light, they could bask on there. All right, now, I went over temperatures. One thing I forgot to mention in temperatures is that you always want to keep it between 88 and 90 degrees for the basking, basking light, basking spot, all right? But you also want to have one of these Helix control systems, DBS 1000, looks like that. And it's a lot of money, it is, it's $114, $110, but it's really worth it, all right? Um, this is what it looks like. The reason why I have this temperature set to 91 because this tank is plastic and it um dissipates the heat a little. So it dissipates it by like 3 degrees so I keep it like that. But this is what it looks like and these two cords, one goes into the um, wall plug outlet and it's not grounded. If you want, if you have a rack system, get grounded. It's like $4 more. But anyway, but um, grounded means it has that third little like round plug at the bottom. This part, the second wire, goes into your heat source, so if you have an under tank heater, well, the heater will actually plug into that, and then this is a thermometer probe, you put that under the under tank heater, and that measures the temperature, alright? Now, what else, let's see, let's see, I went over that, I went over that, um, um, you could use cork barks, cork bark flat, rounds, Driftwood, plant, desert plants. You can use um, live ones or fake ones. Just live ones don't allow it to have spikes, so that'd be kind of dangerous. All right. Um, water and humidity. Like you said, just a water dish. Humidity, ten to thirty percent. Thirty percent if you're sh if they're shedding. Um, nutrition. They could eat in uh, crickets, mealworms, waxworms, budworms, silkworms. Um. You feed a pinky mice if your animal's underweight or if you're breeding to only to females though. If you don't have to feed it only to females, but if you're breeding them only to females, alright. Um let's see. Yeah. Mealworms. They could also eat giant mealworms, alright. Um they should food should be offered daily for babies, every other day for adults. Sub adults, alright. Um you only want to give them about as much as they could eat in about an hour. If they have any more crickets or mealworms. Well, the, if you have any more crickets left in the cage, take them out, but that's that. All right. Um, you want to dust them. If you don't have the calcium dish in there, I still dust mine once a week just in case. All right. Um, but you want to be careful not to overdose them, which I don't. In terms of handling... They're really good pets, docile, everything. It's just amazing how good they are. All right. Oh, and also I forgot to show you. You could also just use like a sushi dish like this and have a top on it. I turn it upside down. I don't know if you guys have this by where you live. I roam, brothers. And I just turn it upside down and I cut out a little thing and melted the side so it's not sharp and they it's perfect for them. Nice dark places. And it's 99 cents. You know, it's perfect. Or you can get this thing for $13 for absolutely no reason. Alright, but um, anyway, so that's that. It's Kishi on Leopard Geckos. Any comments, let me know. And by no means you should take this and just uh, go buy a gecko on this information. Alright, so um, comment, rate, subscribe. More videos coming. Just let me know if you have any requests. And I'm going to try this 
end this by 10 minutes exactly, so I will see you guys later.